Run Your Story family. This is Allison Gilliard with Run Your Story, where every story needs to be heard. And you guys are in for a story with my incredible friend, Rachel Hadley Clausen, or Rachel HC, as she goes by. Wow, wow, and wow. Seriously, guys, you are about to hear a story of not only an overcomer, but perseverance, endurance, just Rachel is all the things. And what an incredible spirit she has. She also brings some great insight, which again, never thought of, and that is progress is perfection. Oh, so good. And then everything is temporary. Your speed is temporary. Where you're at is temporary in life. Like we're always changing and always going through something. And so, wow, that was just absolutely incredible. Rachel brings such great insight. If you've not met Rachel, I highly encourage that you do. She is just a ray of sunshine. I could talk to her for hours. We text constantly now. I absolutely love her. I'm a huge fan. And I'm so grateful that one, she listens to the podcast and she's been like, hey, can you have this person on the podcast? Can you have this person on the podcast? And she's been introducing me to people. And I appreciate that. And then for her to be open with her story, it's a hard one, but man, it's so encouraging. And again, you're going to be blown away by the tenacity that she has. She's incredible. So thank you, Rachel, so much for sharing your story. And I'm so glad you're still here, my friend. Wow. Just absolutely incredible. And Fighting With Hope, who is fueling up our podcast this month. We are also so grateful for what they do for our community. They provide chemo boxes at no cost to cancer patients, no matter what the cancer is. And this was all speared off from my amazing dear friend, Emily King, who right now is in Boston on a clinical trial with colon cancer. And so she has been fighting this for years and we're all praying for her and over her and that this clinical trial works. And so through all of her many, many doses of chemo, the toll it takes in the body, She has learned some neat little tricks and things that have helped her get through it. And so she shares that in the box along with candies that have helped her. Things that we don't even think about like nausea and ulcers, just all kinds of things. And there's tea in there. There's a water bottle. There's a blanket. So much, so much. And unfortunately, we know in this world, kids are not immune to cancer. And so there's also a kid's box. There's a men's box and there's a woman's box. And so... If you want to sponsor a box, I highly encourage you to go check out Fighting With Hope and sponsor one. And you can learn more about Fighting With Hope on their website and also on their social media. And highly encourage you guys to do that. Also encourage you to go get screened this month for the month of March, colonoscopies. Go check your colon. Go get it done, guys. I go every five years. So just a little fun fact. (laughs) But highly, highly encourage you guys to go not only get screened, But check on your friends that are battling cancer because they are incredible human beings going through tough things. Oh man, I love you guys. That's all I gotta say. So definitely check on your friends, definitely check on your colon and definitely check out Fighting With Hope, guys. All right, lace up those running shoes. Get ready, get set and go run. My friend Rachel HC and her run your story. Thank you, Rachel, so much for being here. We've been social media friends for a while now. <laughs> and then recently met in person at a Mardi Gras ball of all places. <laughs> and then once I met you, I was like, oh, I've seen you. I know. Like, That's you. great. Yeah. <laughs> I love that so much. It's probably like, it's such a great story. I, I love that. And you've actually recommended people to come on the podcast. So oh, yes. thank you for that. Yes. I think that what you're doing is really important. And I think community is such a big, I've listened to a few episodes, you mm-hmm. know, I'm very academic, had to prepare. And so (laughs) community is such a recurring theme for everybody. Mm. And I think you're doing something really important to really bring that community together. Community weavers is how I see you and what you're doing here. So, Well, geez, already made me cry (laughs) before we get started. (laughs) So I've been fortunate enough because you shared part of your story with me, which wowzers. (laughs) And I just was like, talk about being an overcomer and getting back to the pavement so what is your run story rachel i have notes for this because i didn't want to leave anything out and my run story is i might be a little different my family is very athletic Mm -hmm. my grandfather played on the italian olympic soccer team like just fun (laughs) facts they're very athletic (laughs) and so i grew up where we lived out in the country out in irvington 
in Theodore and we had nothing but woods behind our house. So our whole family would go for a run. Mm -hmm. My dad especially had this three mile loop. We walked dogs every day. We had a pool. We swam laps. My family had a business in town and we would bike from Irvington Theodore area into town. (laughs) So I grew up doing these Mm -hmm. things and it was a very natural progression to keep that going. And then in high school, our lives became really chaotic. Mm -hmm. Things on the news that you watched police shows and stuff. And it was very much like that. And I didn't have much control over anything, Mm. but I was really fortunate that my mom has always been my biggest supporter and my sister and the community. I I rode horses and all of the people out there in Irvington have been so supportive of me Mm. and my school. I went to St. Luke's Episcopal School and I was actually the first student there before they had a high school to compete in a national sport. And it was cross country running. What? I just ran cross country and I made it to the Junior Olympics and the finals and the trials for that. And so even though we did not have any money to spend on something like that, the school met and voted that I should compete and they were going to help me get there. And my cross country coach went to Nebraska with us and it was incredible. Mm -hmm. And that kind of continued actually in high school, even though my home life was very chaotic and destructive. I made friends with Diana Goff. Mm -hmm. And Kathy O'Connor and their group that used to meet at the YMCA five days a week. And they just took me in. I don't even really know how it happened. Diana walked up and started talking to me about something. She, I love She's her. Never She's, met a stranger. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and they just took me in. And five days a week, I started working out with them. We would lift mm-hmm. weights and we would run this three-mile loop. And then we started doing triathlons together. And it became so much a part of my identity that I just... I've never considered not (laughs) being in triathlon and running. And so then when the accident happened, it it was no question for me that I was going to do triathlons again. And so I continued that. And through college, I still worked out with Diana and kept doing triathlons until I graduated. And I graduated on May 14th. And on May 15th, I drove up to Atlanta to start my big girl job after college graduation. (laughs) And the next morning I got up at 5 a.m. and I was just going to bike right around Atlanta before I started my job. I got hit by this car. (laughs) Oh, man. And it dragged me across the highway. And (laughs) it it was just strange how things happen. Mm -hmm. So my best friend from childhood had happened to come up the night before and stay with me in the hotel because she was interviewing at a law firm in Atlanta. And so when I get hit and I'm not able to tell them who I am or how to contact anybody. She's sure. (laughs) They call the hotel and my best childhood friend since first grade answers the phone and is like, I can call her mom right now. We will. It was incredible. So we had a lot of surgeries that entire Tuesday, May 17th, I celebrate every year, Um, was in surgery all day. And I didn't know who I was. I didn't know any of this till like a year later. My nephew accidentally said it. And I said, what do you mean I didn't know? (laughs) So my family told me. I thought I was eight years old. And I kept saying that you need to tell my mom and my dad that I had an accident. I fell off my bike. Oh, my God. <laughs> like fell off my bike. No, you were hit. Right. And I haven't spoken to my dad since I was 12 years old. But I was like, you need to tell him. You need mm-hmm. to tell him I fell off my mm-hmm. bike. And thankfully, all of that went away. So I had a pretty severe concussion, but mostly recovered. I probably ramble a little more. I don't write as coherently as I used to, but just fine to get through grad school. So it's good enough. <laughs> and my mom and my boyfriend, who I had just started dating two weeks before, came up and sat with me in the hospital. And the hospital stay was rough because it was a trauma center, mm. Kennestone Trauma Center, and they did a phenomenal job. I still remember my surgeon's name was Jessica Bellotti, and I have a titanium rods. I have pins everywhere. My pelvis and my femur were shattered, and she put it all back together. She did a great job. <laughs> Man. So my new boyfriend comes to see me, and my mom comes to see me, and they could only come for literally an hour a day. Mm. And so they go back home and I'm in the hospital for weeks. I was on the stroke ward. And so most of the people had had strokes and couldn't talk. Mm. And so it was incredibly lonely and isolating because one, I'm just a talk of person. <laughs> but two, other patients couldn't talk with me. And I think a lot of the healthcare staff got used to not talking to patients since they don't talk back. And so no one was interacting with me. So I made up totally inappropriate jokes to get people's attention. <laughs> 
my physical <laughs> therapist because of my brain injury. I would perseverate a little bit. And my physical therapist, his name was Scott, which is my husband's name. Oh, okay. my boyfriend at the mm-hmm. time. And Way to go, Scott. We're right. Yes, it. yes. <laughs> and every time my physical therapist would walk in and go, hey, I'm Scott. And then he would start to say, not your boyfriend. Because I would say it every time. I'd be like, you're not my boyfriend. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> so like I have a card signed from him where he says, Scott, not your boyfriend. <laughs> but they did a phenomenal job. I was going to have to stay up there. This is before Obamacare. I didn't have health insurance. When I say that our my adolescent years were really chaotic, I mean, at one point we didn't have a home. My mom was staying with a friend and I was staying with friends and that's mm. how we had to live. Things were really rough. And so health insurance was not the top priority. At you were about point. to start your big girl job. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And so mm-hmm. I had three DVTs in my leg from the mm-hmm. break and I was on $27,000 worth of blood thinners daily. And they were like, unless you can afford that, <laughs> then we can't release you until you have health insurance. Can't get health insurance because now I'm not working. <laughs> it was a mess. And there was a doctor here. He's a pulmonologist. I'm so grateful for He heard what was happening and he said, send her home, put her under my medical license. I will monitor her at home, let her leave. And so I got to come home and his wife is a physical therapist and she met with me because I didn't have insurance and told me she would do these brief assessments and tell me what I needed to do to learn to walk again. And so I was in a wheelchair for a long time and then I moved to crutches and eventually came for quite a while until I could walk without one. And <laughs> everyone was so supportive. My friends, I had to go to have my blood monitored mm-hmm. three times a week for the DVTs. And my friends would take turns driving me to the doctor. I did end up losing my job because it was working with kids with special needs. And you have to physically be able to help them. Sure. But that company still was very kind and supportive and always checked on me. The community, again, here. Is just phenomenal. Mm. The Rape Crisis Center threw a paid party fundraiser for me. It was, mm. people are incredible here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I was told that I would never walk again when I was discharged from the hospital. Actually, everyone who was on staff when I came in lined the hallways to mm. see me out because no one thought I was going to survive. Oh, wow. And I remember the doctor telling me we were supposed to go to the Hangout Music Fest that weekend, me and my new boyfriend, right? (laughs) And I didn't understand the severity of what was happening. And I was like, well, we're still going to go to Hangout Fest. And my now husband was like, Rachel, (laughs) we're not going to hang out. (laughs) You have open holes in your leg. We're not going to the beach anytime (laughs) soon. And I was like, yes, we are. You can wheel me in the chair. I am going. (laughs) So eventually I learned to accept that we're not going to hang out that weekend. (laughs) And the doctor said, in trying to convince me to how severe the situation was, he said, you're never going to walk without help again. And I was Mm. like, I was training for a half Ironman when I did this. He said, okay. And I said, I'm walking. I'm going to compete in one of those. That's Mm. been my goal forever. And one time I had been training for one, but my mom actually had gotten sick with cancer. And so... I had dropped out of the race to, we just had a lot going on. Sure. So I was like, you're full of it. <laughs> it's happening. <laughs> don't I don't know what, what I can you do. <laughs> I was like, I don't know what images you're looking at and I don't care. <laughs> it's <laughs> happening. And thanks to the community I have, it has. Mm. So I had to switch what grad school I was going to go to because I was in a wheelchair for that year and couldn't move across states to <laughs> just go to grad school. Fair. <laughs> But it ended up working out because I went to grad school here, which turned out being the best fit for me. And Mm -hmm. psychology, clinical psych grad school is all about fit for research and clinical experiences. And it prepared me perfectly for what I do now. So it worked out. Yeah. I'm not a big fan of the phrase that everything happens for a reason, because I know when you're going through things, that feels almost unfair for a lot of people. Yes. But I do say that for me personally, it worked out. So then I started running again and it helped get me through grad school. It helps me in my daily job. So I'm what's called a medical psychologist where I bridge the gap between behavioral health and medicine. So the lessons you learn from running, like pacing yourself, like Mm -hmm. slowly adding on, like motivating yourself when things are hard, serve me so well. And I'm able to connect with patients who it doesn't matter if they're not running, whatever their goals are, Mm -hmm. their goals, the process is the same. Mm-hmm. And so running, it's how I know all my best friends. <laughs> I know as adults, it's hard to make friends. But in the running community, it's not. Yeah, yeah. People often talk to me about how difficult it is to make friends. And it is for most adults. Mm-hmm. 
But in our running community, it's not. Anyone will come up and talk to you and mm -hmm. you talk to them that week and the next week and the next week and you have friends for life. Literally, my two best friends I know from triathlon and that's just <laughs> how we know each other and we will probably always be best friends. So now I have professionally gotten to where I will be for the rest of my career and I'm a mom and I think that running is still an important part of my story there because running is all about trusting the process and it brings you back to who you are in that moment, it makes you be present right now. And that I think is important for having little kids who I know will grow up and not be with me. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's important for going through life, especially I've officially reached middle age, according to the American <laughs> Medical Association. <laughs> I'm 35. Um, and I know how I work with people every day, seeing how things are going to go. Because of my accident when I was 25, they looked at my back and they said, down to here, you have a 25-year-old back. And then from there down, you have a 65-year-old back. <laughs> You're like, well, thanks to that car. <laughs> right. that took me out of my bike. <laughs> so, so I know that things are going to be difficult mm. as your body changes. That's hard to accept. But I think running really helps people with that mindset of we have to adjust to where we are now. Mm, that's good. I think it's helpful mm. for that. Because we're always in a different season. Yes. We're either coming out of a season, going into a season, or getting ready to go into another season. Exactly. And adjust. Oh, that's so good. When I have patients who have been runners or competitive walkers or whatever mm -hmm. it is, I always know that they have that mentality that sometimes you got to push through. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you got to listen to your body and they're going to be set up for success pretty well. Wow. Really? Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. That and mm -hmm. my farmers. People who raise livestock and mm. farm, generally they're pretty successful patients. Wow. Good to know. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Anytime <laughs> I get a new patient who's older and he's referred to me for like <laughs> pain and he's like, oh, well, I farm chickens. I'm like, you're going to be <laughs> fine. You're going to be fine. The chickens are going to save you. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> So I love the lessons that you shared for running and also how that is incorporated into how you're raising your children. Right. And, oh, that's beautiful. We have lucked out. My, of course, I just am delighted with my children. <laughs> <laughs> but my son is three now, and he is hilarious, and he loves pushing himself in endurance stuff already. Mm. So he likes going, you think we can make it one more yard? He's, I think we can do that. <laughs> <laughs> and then he'll go, I'm super strong. You're super strong too, mm -hmm. mommy. And nothing's more motivating yeah. than that. Absolutely. Oh, I love that. I want to know what has been your favorite race and why? My favorite race was Ryan Man. Oh, and Brandon. Yes. So fun fact, I graduated from Brandon High School. Did you really? Didn't know there was a triathlon <laughs> at all. <laughs> and then a friend of mine told me about it and I was like, let's go do this. <laughs> And that's the year they canceled it. No. Yeah. So I was like, well, here we are. <laughs> yeah. I loved that race. Mm, um, okay. I, just, I loved it. I loved the course. But the people all came out and cheered. And it was so much fun. And it was so motivating. And the story behind it was motivating. Mm -hmm. And I had also signed up for the year before it was canceled and had to postpone because of something with grad school. And then the next year, I had postponed for a year. So yeah. I was very excited to go. And they were like, nope. No more. <laughs> right. We're not bringing you back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Because uh, that one when you swim in a reservoir. Yeah. Right? Okay. Yes. Yeah. It mm -hmm. was awesome. And it was so pretty. Yeah. Well, well. <laughs> and there would always be a big group from Mobile and who mm -hmm. went. It was, yeah. Behind that would be another one, actually, that got canceled. <laughs> was up in Montgomery, the capital. No, don't even say it. <laughs> Are you serious? Yes. No. Yes. No. Listen, let's talk about that run. Okay, let's talk about the run when you're looking up. And you just see all the... My favorite moment for that race <laughs> was when you would look up. And, of course, you see the Capitol. But the hill is like this. And all these guys with these giant calves with giant Iron Man tattoos, every single one of them walking. And I was like, well, if they're walking, yes, I'm walking too. <laughs> really? It was. Okay. Yeah. I mean, the swim was fine. The swim I, was, I love that's the swim. The, thing, is the swim is my weakest part. And so the swim was mm -hmm. so great. Because it was down current. It was yes. good. Yeah. Yeah. You get on the boat. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Amazing. They Amazing. really don't have that one anymore. Last time I tried yeah. to register for it, they didn't have mm -hmm. it. 
It's probably because people were like the hymns. <laughs> I'm telling, I always look up and I'm like, well, if they're walking, then I, who am I? <laughs> Let's not be an overachiever here. <laughs> I agree. Actually, some of the best advice I was ever given by Ricky, actually, and he was talking about running uphill and how pointless it is. Unless you're some superstar who's yeah. super fast, mm. you don't make enough time to make it worth it. And I timed myself and was like, he's right. It is not worth it. I will walk the uphills. I mean, I, <laughs> that, and I don't even think that, that was like a hill with an cloud with a hill. Yeah. That was yeah. just a monster. Yeah. But so. yeah, I just walk up those. And Daphne, the Publix. Okay, Grand Man. That hill. Okay. Yeah. But technically, that one's like a tiny, like, that's a short one. It is short. Wide. Like, you're like, okay, I can. But you have to bike up it and walk Oh, it's it. terrible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then everyone's watching you, and you're like, yes. please don't let me fall off this bike as I'm going up there. <laughs> There's a reason yeah. why I don't do that one. <laughs> and, and then, I think third, like, out of ones that are still offered would be the Chattanooga hat. I That's really a like good one. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That would be my fave. That mm-hmm. swim is great too. Really? Yes, it's down mm-hmm. current, and they can actually. Oh, that's when you go up the stairs. Yeah, and you come out of it, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. and they can actually change the dam that leads to it, yeah. and so it can go faster or slower. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was my that fastest was swim ever. Really? Oh yeah. Wow. Mm. Have you ever done Brett Robinson? Don't. No. <gasps> By the hang out? Are you kidding me? <laughs> that is actually the one I was training for when I got hit. Stop. <laughs> oh, oh, man. That is by far my favorite. Is it really? It's so Okay, first of all, you're at the beach. Yes. But this past year, the water, I've never seen it so clear and so calm. Nice. And so I was, and now, okay, okay, granted, I did the sprint and I've done the sprint for as long as I can remember because that was just fun. I yeah. want to get done. I want to enjoy the beach. Right. Like, so I didn't train because yeah. I'm like, you've done that one, you know the course. And so I was like, I got this. And I'm cruising along swimming. And I, you literally see baby stingrays and like baby <laughs> sharks. And I was living my best life. I was like, this is amazing. <laughs> and I totally forgot I was competing because I was just in the world. I was just having the time of my life because I've never seen the water so clear. Yeah. And it was great. That's amazing. So it was so fun. I love that. I love that. But yeah. And of course, you get to party at the hangout. Yes. And the yes. food is fantastic because the hangout makes it so <laughs> That is one that I always think about and want mm-hmm. to do, and I've just mm-hmm. never, ever gotten over there. Done. It's yeah. done this year, September. <laughs> September. I expect to see you there. <laughs> Maybe you should. Mm. Maybe it's I should. a good one. And it's the same people that put on Capital. Oh. Yeah. I see. Well, now they changed their name, but they were right, Team right. Magic. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I used to love Team Magic races. Mm-hmm. They were so yeah. good. Oh, yeah. I'm with you. Yeah. Gunters all over. Mm-hmm. Love them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They do good stuff. <laughs> Did you ever do Sunfish? That was in Meridian? I don't think so. Okay, good. I don't think so. Oh. That's, <laughs> they don't do that one either. There's a reason that they don't do that one either. Oh, I love Hilarious. that. Love it so much. I wish I was surprised by this answer because we had talked about it ahead of time. I'm like, she's going to have a pre-race date. And you just seem like such a, this is my ritual. This is what I do. And then what did you tell me? <laughs> I live in organized chaos. There we go. <laughs> so when it comes to work, or actually, I would say that my staff says I'm not that organized. But I was going to say, I'm so organized. It's just organized chaos. Like, it's mm-hmm. organized in my mind. As long as I have a plan, okay. I'm good. But I think from the outside, it looks very disorganized. Mm. <laughs> and so when I was reading through these, I'll be totally transparent that doing this interview, I... Had a little nervousness. I'm not typically a nervous person, but I just feel a little, I told you, imposter mm. syndrome. Because False information. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming out of maternity leave, and I'm not running very consistently. I'm not exercising very consistently. And so I was like, man, pre-race routine, post-race routine. I don't really have a routine. <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> And I thought of all these previous things. And I do get routines, but they change. Oh, that's fair. It's realistic about them. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. When I was on residency, I got very thin. Life was very stressful, and I drove and stayed in Auburn, but my husband was here. And so Mm. every Monday morning, I would drive up there, and every Friday night, I would drive home. So I was driving 1,000 miles a week because I also stayed on a friend's couch in Auburn, but drove to Montgomery every day for my residency. Wow. So it was (laughs) two hours a day of driving. And then my routine was stop at Waffle House eat and then go to a race because I had to drive so far that I would definitely digest and be fine. So I had a routine of Waffle House then. Mm. Now, more recently, my routine has been more like a scent protein makes this really light tasting protein drink 
that's lemon flavored and you put it with water hmm. and it's easy to drink. It's easy to digest. I usually have something like that with, I don't know, an Eggo waffle or something yeah. with carbs and bread. You're like, so I bring back the waffle yes. house. <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> and then I might have either coffee or pre-workout because the scent makes this really light caffeine only pre-workout. Mm-hmm. There's no other mm-hmm. stuff in it. But I have a year and a half ago treated myself to this very fancy coffee machine at home that is a barista in an electronic box and literally you press this button that looks like a latte and it does the whole thing and makes this thing look <laughs> and so it's pretty hard for me to leave my coffee nowadays <laughs> as I was gonna say so what's the address to your house the phone, I'll be there daily <laughs> that's right that's actually I've told all my neighbors I'm like come try out my coffee mm. machine on Fridays I work from home <laughs> <laughs> just come and go. Just yeah. Serve, serve yeah. yourself. We have a porch out front, porch out back. Just uh, chill I love out. that. Yeah. <laughs> so hard to leave my coffee right now. Absolutely. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you get down with the finish line. Yes. What does that celebration look like? Again, not super ritualistic. I don't usually like to eat right after. Like I have to have some time to settle down mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. eat. I usually walk around and talk to everybody because those endorphins are going, sure. you know. <laughs> I will tell you that I've always had an appreciation for our bodies and what they can do. Mm. I think my family, because they made their living through taekwondo and martial arts and physical fitness, we've always had a lot of respect for just appreciate what your body can do. Yeah. But after my accident, particularly, I get super emotional now. Mm. Every time I do a triathlon, once I make it to the bike, so the swim is what I have the most nervousness about. Once I'm on the bike, I not right now, but typically I'm the beast on the bike. And running, I'm not a beast when running, but I know I can finish. Yeah. I know I can always mm-hmm. put one foot in front of the other and get there. It doesn't matter. So once I make it to the bike, I know for sure I'm finishing this race. And I always cry. Mm. As soon as I get on the bike, get settled, eat whatever I'm going to eat, make sure everything's where it's supposed to be, I cry. <laughs> First thing. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. I love that. <laughs> I do. I get this rush of endorphins mm-hmm. and I go... Oh, my God, I'm doing it. It's I, I told them I would do this, and I'm doing it. We're mm-hmm. here. We made it again, and I do. So when you asked about, like, your favorite memory, I just, uh, it's every time, mm-hmm. you know? <laughs> Once you set a goal and you reach that goal, I mean, I'm an emotional person. I can watch a show about somebody meeting a goal, and it's something I've never related to ever. I have no desire to do it. But just people overcoming and meeting a goal they set out to meet mm-hmm. is so inspiring oh yeah for sure yeah Yeah. so I always tear up at that point and so afterwards I'm usually trying to come down from all those endorphins and I just walk around and talk to everybody (laughs) I'm like who old did I see at this race (laughs) say hey to everyone (laughs) and then eventually it'll be like an hour and a half later and my husband's like did you eat anything I don't think so (laughs) let's go do that (laughs) he's like they've already taken down the finish line everything we gotta go (laughs) And the one thing I definitely won't eat, though, and it is my pet peeve with the racing world, is red beans and rice. Who oh, made that? that? Thank you. Oh, my God. Yeah. It's the worst. I'm telling you. <laughs> I've never. Yeah, no. No. Mm-mm. No. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> I'm so glad to meet somebody. No. Else. That is like my husband's favorite meal, legitimately. And I'm like, I can. No. no. You're hot. You're sweaty. Your stomach's on fire. There's yes. nothing. I'm with you. No. Because I'm also like, that's not going to taste great after. No. Anyway. No. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't like it in general. Then but especially yeah. when yes. it's hot. <laughs> uh, I think it's because I had to eat it so much <laughs> at my grandparents' house <laughs> that it's a memory where I'm like, no, nah, I can't have it. No. No. <laughs> so I just give it away. I'm like, here, you want my food ticket? <laughs> I'm, I'm, like, like, ticket. I'm like, yeah. I give it to my husband. <laughs> yeah. He's like, yeah, babe, you go race. I'll eat your post-race right. snacks. Yes. That's fair. You're like, we're in this together. <laughs> yep. yep. I love it. Favorite running item, like something that you will not hit the pavement without this item. I actually changed my answer to this mm. four different times. Okay. So, you can get four answers. Okay. It's okay. <laughs> so my first one was headphones. Ooh, okay. Okay. I like just all the time thinking, mm. and if I don't have headphones, I am just going to plan so many business ideas and things for our practice that I'm going to go back home and write them down on a notebook rather than focus on running. (laughs) I am always expanding. (laughs) So (laughs) I like headphones. And then I will say I'm in a headphones crisis right now. Mm. I was a huge fan of the Aero. Aero Yeah, Aftershocks. Yes, Aftershocks. 
for the longest, like all throughout the pandemic, I actually worked from home and used those mm. eight hours a day and would use them to work out. And they never caused me any problems. But now they give me a headache as soon as I put them on. Oh, I don't know what happened. Yeah. So maybe I just gained weight from being pregnant. I'm not no. sure. <laughs> it genuinely could be that. I'm not sure. But I've been searching for other headphones and I'm just not satisfied with anything mm. I've tried so far. Mm -hmm. I really want to try this. Okay, so I'm a big Aftershock fan too. Okay. But it's something about how it just goes, I don't know. I don't, yeah. it's, it is a weird fit. Yeah. But I just saw where they have it now where it's like it just goes over your ear. Like yes. it goes in the ear and there's nothing, like it doesn't go around the head. Gotcha. Like it normally does. Okay. And so you have one for each ear versus the long bite. Right. So that's it's what right I'm looking into. Okay. But yeah. Yeah. Hmm. So I, I originally said that, and then I thought about it, and I was like, actually, <laughs> my number one thing is, well, I always want to watch. So mm -hmm. Apple Watch, mm -hmm. Garmin, mm -hmm. I actually go back and forth. I'm one of the weird, I, I don't know anybody else who does, but I go back and forth. I like them both. So I like having a watch, but I also have to have running pants or shorts with pockets. Yay to the men. Yes, <laughs> great. Pockets are right. such a big deal that I talk about pockets so frequently. <laughs> My three-year-old, every time somebody walks by, he will be like, they have pockets. Or, that doesn't have pockets. <laughs> My God. And I realized the other day, I was like, I must talk about pockets like a lot. Because <laughs> he now, in his own clothes, he will be like, it has pockets. And I'm like, buddy, your clothes have always had pockets. It's <laughs> hilarious. That is great. I love that. He does dance, and his dance outfits do not have pockets. Mm. And he is informing me, he's mom, these don't have pockets. These are not, it's not a good <laughs> outfit. not good. Not functional. <laughs> yep. Yep. I love that. <laughs> so, so, you're, so earbuds, watch, pockets, and, and pockets. Watch. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Those are mine. Mm. Gotta have. Do you have a favorite pair of tights or shorts that have? Yes. Okay. I will say the running skirt, or skirt sports is the brand. Okay. Running skirts. Mm-hmm. The tights underneath are always long enough. They never ride up or crumple, mm -hmm. and so it keeps my legs from rubbing together. Mm -hmm. And then they always have big pockets. I can put everything in there that I need to do. And then they're always super cute. And yeah. they always fit right. Like, mm -hmm. oh, magic. It's magic. I like it. Yeah. Okay. I have all sizes of running <laughs> skirts. <laughs> There's skirt sport clothes. or sport skirts. And I wear them everywhere. When we go to Disney World, I have at least one per day to coordinate colors of with course. an outfit. Of and course. then... I wear them to CrossFit. I wear them to ride my Peloton. I uh, wear them to run. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. Okay. Yes. Mm. And they have sales where you can get them pretty cheap. Mm. And there's mm. also communities where you can buy them secondhand. Mm. So, yeah. yeah. I like it. I like where you're going <laughs> with us. So we talked about the outfit. What are your shoes? My shoes 24-7 are the Ultra Escalantes. Ooh, so, okay. Um, before my accident, I used to be known for wearing stilettos everywhere everywhere. I had at least one pair per day and I wouldn't repeat. I had so many shoes. It was <laughs> it was the thing people knew about me. I would show up every day in a new pair of shoes. Wow. And since my accident, I literally can't have any lift. If I have mm -hmm. any lift because of that 65-year-old back, I will walk hunched over for three days and not be able to stand up straight. Mm -hmm. So ever since then, it's Ultra Escalantes, or I'll wear all stairs sometimes, just nothing that has any lift to it. Yeah. And that's what I wear to work. It's what I wear to weddings. It's what I wear to Mardi Gras balls. Yeah. <laughs> it's what I wear everywhere. Yeah. Wow. Okay. <laughs> yep. Okay. Hmm. That's a good shoe. It's a yeah. good shoe. Mm -hmm. It's a great shoe. Mm -hmm. It's served me well. I, yeah. So I have them in every color, and every time I go into air, and I'm like, just whatever new color. <laughs> well, it's just I don't have boring. this color. <laughs> I'll ask him, and they always have black. Uh, and I'm like, I have 50 of those. I yeah. don't need any more of those. Mm -hmm. So whatever colors they got going. Because yeah. with the pandemic, because of the factories, they mm -hmm. had to switch up and they only made limited amounts because they Fair, yeah. work in rotation. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So whatever color, I get it. And I have them literally in every color. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> Let's talk about running fuel or fueling whenever you're on the bike or whenever you're running for those long runs. What yeah. do you fuel with? So I will say I have an iron stomach. Okay, um, okay. Postpartum anxiety is about the only thing that messes with my stomach. <laughs> but truly, I like the Ascent Protein. Okay. And I like the Ascent Pre-Workout. I can pretty much handle any of the goos. I don't like goos. Okay. I like stuff that I have to chew. Mm, so okay. 
I like the blocks. I mm -hmm. love blocks. Oh my gosh. But it's, they're all still made by goo. Um, yeah. I love all of those things. Okay. Uh, those little sports beans that mm -hmm. used to, I mm -hmm. used to love those. Yeah. Tastes like candy, man. <laughs> <laughs> it does. Okay. I like <laughs> it. You mentioned headphones. So yes. what is Rachel's playlist like? Usually it's a murder podcast. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I thought about I I put several things there, and I was like, I have to be honest because if my husband listens to this, he will be like, you did not say a murder podcast. <laughs> you are twenty four seven listening to murder podcasts. Okay. So in order of frequency, it's murder podcasts, psychological podcasts, legal podcasts. I also teach mental health in the law, so mm, I listen okay. to a little bit of that. Or Moana and Disney tracks, eighties, mm. nineties, thousands music. Shakira, Imagine Dragons. <laughs> I try not to be cliche, but I definitely am. <laughs> I haven't listened to new music in a very long time unless it's in a Disney movie. Mm. That's, they do have great songs. They do. <laughs> so, yeah. So there's one podcast that you're missing from there on that list. That is true. I okay. did not include yours, no, but I yeah. do listen to yours, okay. actually. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So has this changed the way that you run listening to a murder podcast? Because I have friends that had to stop. They were like, I was listening and then I would be for a run. And they're like, no, nah, I can't listen to it anymore. So this is going to sound real morbid, but I grew up with my dad teaching rape prevention seminars. And so I've <laughs> thought about those types of things my entire life. Okay, okay. And so to me, sometimes a particularly scary moment, my heart might rate faster you're like, be you're like i wasn't out. pushing <laughs> yes. but i do run faster like, yeah. i'm scared <laughs> um, i would yeah <laughs> so i think about that stuff 24 7 anyway mm. and so i don't think it changes it a whole lot for me okay <laughs> so basically in order for me to get faster i have to be scared i listen to a murder podcast look if you are Listening mm. to a story from a survivor talk about what happened in this horrible series of events, and you are looking around at the shadows behind the trees, you will run faster. Mm. Sure. Okay. <laughs> wow. No. <Nah>. Got it. <laughs> Do you have a favorite recovery tool? I would say my bed. I think mm. sleep gets missed a lot in workout communities as sure. like the most important thing mm. we do. <laughs> and so I would say my bed, first of all. I use lots of things as tools, but they're not, like, something you buy as a tool. Like, I think of CrossFit mm. for recovery yeah. just because okay. I know movement is always what makes me feel better the next day. Mm. And so whether it's CrossFit, and maybe I don't push as hard, <laughs> but I get different movements. It's always a whole body workout. So you move everything. Mm -hmm. Or I think of dance with your kid for a silly few minutes and mm -hmm. that gets you moving and wet. You know, it mm -hmm. works through it or go for a walk or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Just I know movement is important. Those races when I was in grad school that I couldn't afford to stay in a hotel <laughs> <laughs> and I had to drive six hours afterwards. You get so stiff yeah, and yeah. so uncomfortable. It's mm -hmm. awful. So movement mm -hmm. for sure. And then I do have a Theragun that I highly recommend. That is so good. <laughs> that that's really good. I, I can, and I'm just picturing you with your kid with Moana. <laughs> yes, <laughs> dancing Moana. in the kitchen. <laughs> You're like, just says Mama's recovering. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> he knows exactly what I'm talking about, and I say it several times a day. Where I'm like, you to me. You're welcome. <laughs> That is fantastic. Oh, yes. Oh, you're such a fun mom. I love that. <laughs> I don't know if we can trust my perspective on it. But we'll ask him. That. That's so fun. So fun. You did mention CrossFit. Yes. Is there anything else that you do along with CrossFit for cross-training activity? Cycling's my mm. top. So cycling, I'm good at. And cycling, I love. I just, mm. nothing beats feeling like a five-year-old riding a bike for the first mm. time again, you know? Going downhill, yes. putting the wind in your hair, yes. and you can scream. Just like, ah, absolutely. Yeah, what yeah, yeah. is more free than that? Mm. And then I just think of, so I think of all these different times in my life when I rode and things were so mm. great, right? So like I remember being on residency, and it was a really hard year. I was away from my family. And I couldn't even see my friends that much because I was always driving back sure. and forth. And it was just hard mm -hmm. and isolating. And so I took my bike everywhere and I learned all these trails in Montgomery and Auburn. 
to ride and mm-hmm. some out in the country. And I made some great friends I'm still friends with mm-hmm. from those cycling communities mm-hmm. and those running communities. And I think of these amazing farms. We would bike past every week, a couple times a week. And you just, nothing feels like freedom like that does. Mm-hmm. I told, so part of my story is that I was a century bike rider first. Great. And so we went all over the state of Alabama. We did yes. that part of the Alabama Back Road Series. Yes. And same like we have friends that we've been friends with for years that it's almost like the cycling community as a whole has come down a little bit because album backwards used to be this huge yes like you would get do all the races get all the medals it was so fun but it was just something about being with other people riding and just going to the rest stops and just having yes eight hours yeah i I spent all day on my bike but man (laughs) wasn't that a great time it was Mm. yes so you know what i love about running and cycling communities both is the streets like better than anyone Mm -hmm. when I was in college the company I worked for moved me around and I would always take my bike and I would go run and I just remember realizing that runners of cities know the streets and directions more than anybody else you know we we know exactly where to go for what Mm -hmm. (laughs) we know what the train's gonna look like (laughs) and so I really like that for Mm -hmm. getting to know the back road series in Alabama there are so many beautiful places oh. that I'm like, this is mm-hmm. this out of the way. N- never would have gone here yeah. except for this ride. Right. It's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's incredible. Yeah. There was one that started in Dothan. Like, yes. This goes to Dothan. Yes. You know, well, there was a bike ride. And it went to part of Tennessee and part of Georgia. And oh. it was just. And then you get down and you're like, oh, I can't believe I did that. Right. Or yeah. like Pelham for a Cure, which was from Monroeville to different places it'd be like ronald mcdonald house or it would be battleship all these different things you're just like do we just really do that right like, yeah i can literally look on a map and mm-hmm. see where we started what? yeah and we came all the way over right yeah it's a different yeah it's incredible Build different yes <laughs> <laughs> now still about not being able to move for a few days after that they're like hmm good this is good <laughs> is there a race that looking back you're like yeah i don't know that i'll ever want to do that one again Memphis Half Iron Man. Oh, yes. A little you didn't even think about it. You're like, let me just the tone change and everything. You're like, there's a story here. <laughs> Hands down. So I think part of it is expectations that it used to be a really good race. Oh, and okay. Everyone raved, and it has this setup where it could be the mm-hmm. coolest race out there. So you're on this. I call it a farm, and I think they call it a farm, but it's not. There are wildebeest, and there are all these weird animals, right? These foreign animals there. Okay. And it's like some kind of rehabilitation habitat for them. And you do an Iron Man in the middle of it, or a half <laughs> Iron Man. <laughs> yeah. So there is this lake, and it could be a fine swim, but actually the year I did it, they changed the course where you swam straight into the rising sun. And you couldn't see anything. Everybody's, when you pulled up, mm-hmm. Zwift, or Z, what was it? Zwift, yeah. Afterwards, everybody is all over the place. And then you get on the bike, and they change the bike route. Where, and I remember we even rode the route in our car. And when I was like, a cyclist did not make this route. This is, oh, it went over so many bumps. Mm. Literally, as soon as I got on the bike, I lost two water bottles. No, oh, you're, oh <laughs> man. And you're starting out on this 56 mile bike ride. Yeah. And you're like, well, there you go. One was my pre workout, which I hadn't had that morning before my race. Oh. So I just <laughs> had my routine. And then I was like, I have it on my bike. I'll take it on my bike. And lost the bottle was very upset about that. And then they had speed bumps going out in to leave from where the farm is to the main road. There were these speed bumps that were so horrible, you literally had to come almost to a stop to go over them. What? And then when you got all the way out, it was terrible roads that were under construction. Who <laughs> puts a race course on a road under construction? And you came to one place, you came to a hill, and there was a stop sign, and they didn't have police at every intersection. Oh, no. So you actually mm-hmm. had to come to a stop mm-hmm. if there was traffic coming. Mm-hmm. And then another one, you had to do this sharp right turn at the bottom of a hill. No. You're going super no. fast, and so you have to brake. And then, oh. Yeah. It, I was like, a cyclist did not yeah. make this course. <laughs> And then the run was a double, nope, it wasn't even a double loop. It was a short loop. You did it a couple times. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was You're like, like this no. is not my race. This oh. Man. We also just didn't stay in a good part of Memphis, I feel like. Because 
when we pulled into our Airbnb, we were like, this, there were chains everywhere. <laughs> like, happened. Um, this is not the best um, place. We're going to be on the murder podcast. <laughs> right. Do you know how many times I'm like, we're going to be murdered. This is, this is how I go wow. out. <laughs> this place right here. <laughs> Oh, man. I, and I'll tell you what, there's nothing worse than being on a bad road on your bike because then your bike feels like it's going to fall apart at any moment. You're like, I'm just, you feel like a cartoon character. You're like, I'm just going to lose all the part. I was so friendly. I got my new Orbea and like new to me Orbea and it's my tri bike and I'm so ready. And then this, this course, we got done with it and I did it with Catherine Taylor, who's my best friend. And she's all about cycling. Mm, she's a master yeah. mechanic. I consult with her about which bike should I use for yeah, this. Sure. Right? Oh, oh that's like, good. We used our tri bikes. We definitely should have used road bikes for this one. This was because it was you were either going downhill very quickly or you were going uphill very slowly. There was no tri. Arrow oh, position. like it was. Oh, yeah, you were out of your seat. You were not in the arrow mm -hmm. position mm -hmm. at all for the entire. She was like, "This was a mistake." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think we would both say Memphis. Mm -hmm. not our favorite. Got it. That's fair. <laughs> hey. That's how my child says it. When he doesn't like a food, he'll go, that's not my favorite. That's <laughs> I don't love it. <laughs> Listen, I tried it. I did what I was supposed to. I went. I did it. I won't do it again. <laughs> I'm thankful he doesn't say something like really rude. He'll just say, I don't love it. <laughs> but get dry, Mom. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> Let's say that somebody wants to get started either running, cycling, or into the triathlon world. What is a piece of advice you would give them, or if they're coming back from an injury, as what you did? What is something you would tell them? So I would first make sure I don't assume that I know what you're going through. But what I tell myself and remind myself is that everything is temporary. So mm -hmm. pain, success, growth, regression, all of this life is temporary. Mm -hmm. Your skills are temporary. Your speed, whatever it is, is temporary. It's mm -hmm. going to change in one direction or another, and that's okay. It's Everything is about change all the time. Progress is perfection. So I know it's common to say that progress, not perfection, mm -hmm. but progress is perfection. If we are shooting for progress and we make progress, that's huge. We mm -hmm. didn't just hold still. We didn't move backwards. That is perfection. We yeah. made progress. Mm -hmm. I think for getting into movement at all, you have to make it part of your identity. That imposter syndrome, you have to push to the side and be okay that it's going to feel like imposter syndrome. Right now, I feel like an imposter. I'm not running consistently like I normally do. But I know that's temporary mm -hmm. and I know who I am, that mm -hmm. I will get back into it. You trust the process. You make it part of your identity and you make connections. You make roots in that community because it is part of your identity. And that's how you always get pulled back in. You remind yourself it's one foot and then the other foot and then again. And again, and mm -hmm. you go slower, faster, you just go. And that's what matters. And then I personally, and this isn't for everybody, but I personally remind myself to take a deep breath in. You breathe out longer than you breathe in. It will always relax your body. And then I smile because it's going to be fine. <laughs> that is so good. <laughs> oh, so good. And I really, I've never thought about progress being perfection. It absolutely yeah. is. Mm -hmm. In human metabolism, if you do something 80% of the time, it's pretty much considered perfect. So if 80% is perfect, forward movement is all you're looking for. Mm -hmm. I think goal setting is important, but I think not using goal setting as a way to beat yourself over the head is more important. Sure. Uh -huh, yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. We set goals and mm -hmm. if we make it, we celebrate it and we set a new one. And if we don't make it, we don't beat ourselves up over it. We instead say... Why didn't I meet that goal? Let's mm -hmm. analyze it mm -hmm. and then reset. Mm. Figure out what to do differently. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Speaking of goal setting. Yeah. What are your goals? Oh, man. Okay. <laughs> so I just turned 35 and I have this ridiculous goal, but I'm sticking to it. My goal is to run two marathons a year, each in a different state, so that I can run one in all 50 states by the time I'm 60. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. I call it my 25-year New Year's resolution. <laughs> so I have one coming up, and with maternity leave, I have not been training consistently. <laughs> so I might be injured this summer. Who knows? But my best friends are doing it with me, and they are trained. So Catherine is super fast right now. 
but she's gonna do it with me and she is the best model mm. she used to wait for me on the bike when i was first starting out and i would go oh i feel so bad and she'd go if i'm moving my legs i'm good 100 percent, yeah you yeah. know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so that's what she keeps saying about the marathon she's like okay well get out and run a little but <laughs> <laughs> there's music at every mile mm. it's a rock and roll marathon okay, up okay. in nashville okay and so it will be your <laughs> run when you can. Mm -hmm. We'll walk the rest of it. We'll stop every mile and drink some water, drink a beer, whatever, and then dance to the music. And then when you're ready, we'll go again. And we'll mm -hmm. just keep doing it till we finish. <laughs> so that's what's going to happen in April, May. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> oh. And then my goal after that, so with that, one year I want to do the Dopey Challenge in Disney World. Okay. Because mm -hmm. that's always my birthday weekend. Oh, so I just want it to be. Okay. <laughs> so that'll be my Florida race. Mm -hmm. And maybe I need to add the, the Brett Robinson. Yeah, you do. <laughs> that's a great one. So, yes, my goals right now are to get to where I move consistently every day because mm -hmm. that's my that's typically where I am whether it's CrossFit or swimming or biking or running or just weights Peloton I love Peloton mm -hmm. every day is usually what I do but owning a practice <laughs> <laughs> and try and keep things running there and do what I'm supposed to do there and teaching at the university and doing talks for other healthcare centers and having a newborn and a three-year-old takes a lot of time what wait you don't have extra time <laughs> what <laughs> That <laughs> I just finished my postdoctoral master's and got it in the mail yesterday and went and showed the medical doctor who has just made my life so amazing. Mm. I found unicorns in the medical field <laughs> and I just thank them every day. But he said, so what are you going to do with all your free time now? <laughs> I was like, well, not sleep since the three-month-old can roll over and cry now. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. Stare mm. at the wall at 2 a.m. is probably what I'll do. That's great. <laughs> or you, do, you know what, kids? Let's go ride the bike together. So we have the right. I cannot wait <laughs> until she is old enough to sit in the back of the... You have to wait till they're like six months mm -hmm. to put them mm -hmm. in the back of a bike trailer. And yeah, stuff. okay. I have all the stuff. Like as soon as she's old enough, like, my son, <laughs> he has biked so many miles mm -hmm. and run so many miles with me. I cannot wait till she is old enough. They will just both go back there and Aww. we'll go for a bike ride. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I love it. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> that's amazing. Let's talk about a mantra. Okay. Something that you tell yourself where you're like, I'm done, but you got to keep going. Mm. I think it's just one foot in front of the other. Mm. You've been here before. You're going to be here again. I never mm -hmm. assume every time you get back into working out when you've taken a break, whether it's from injury or whatever, I think we all like to think I'm never going to stop again, but that's my field I work in. I know people stop all the time yeah, yeah. and you get back into it. It's not a big deal. It doesn't change your identity. Mm -hmm. And so I think I just, you know yourself, you're going to get back to this. So keep putting one foot in front of the other. Mm, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so good. What has been your favorite length to run, whether it's a race or training run? I will tell you that the half marathon is my favorite run length and okay. Half Ironman is my favorite race of all. That is just such the perfect distance for all three of them. Is it? Is it, is it though? <laughs> okay. It is. It is. I think for both of those, like they are <laughs> far enough that I feel like I really accomplished something. <laughs> yes. But they're not so far that I'm going to be injured from doing it without mm. too intentionally training. <laughs> like this upcoming marathon. And I like to tell people since... I used to be fast, and since my accident, I've never been fast, and I probably won't ever be fast again, mm -hmm. and that's okay. But I like to tell people that when I do a half marathon or half Ironman, it's far enough that no one expects me to be fast. Oh, okay. <laughs> but I still feel very accomplished. <laughs> right. <laughs> Listen, we all had to survive yeah. this thing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> when you're not running. What are you passionate about? What do you like to celebrate? Because obviously you're a great mom. You have such a cool family, such cool kid, a really cool job. So those are my main things is right now I'm still in the newborn phase where I'm just in love with my family where I was talking to somebody earlier who's talking about having twins and twins run on both sides of my family. Mm. I was very good candidate to have twins and I'm, I weigh a little more and I'm a little older. So I know all of those things predispose you to have twins. Mm -hmm. I was very nervous about having twins. But since I've had my daughter, I'm like, man, 
I would never have been mad about two of them. (laughs) (laughs) So I am very much still enamored with my family at the moment. And I am always thinking about work. So psychology Mm -hmm. is something that if I were to say I had a superpower, it would be knowing myself. I just know certain things. I always have been that way. My school will tell you that I told them I would have to quit in kindergarten because they weren't going to allow me to wear my long comb lipstick in first grade and they wanted me to wear shorts under my jumper and so I just informed them that it was very sad and I was crying as I told my teacher but I will just have to leave you because that's not who I am. I just (laughs) have always been very self-assured in that regard. (laughs) Listen, I'm going to need you to help me help you. Yes, that is exactly. I was like, I'm so sad for all of us. I will not be coming back in first grade, but you got to change your policy. (laughs) And so I think that's where I always stick to is just I go back to, you know yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know this. You'll get there. Mm. That's so cool. <laughs> I just I think you're so full. Oh, likewise. <laughs> Any final words of wisdom that you have? I think it's all about seeing your identity a certain way. And part of that means being a part of the community. And so mm-hmm. trying to, as much as you can, let go of any hesitation you have mm-hmm. about that. So if you're showing up to a run group and you don't know anybody there, or if it's been a while and so you're not sure who's going to be there or whatever your reservations are, trying as much as you can to let go of those and just enjoy what happens. I think people get in their heads a lot. Mm, and absolutely. That gets in our ways. Mm. But recognizing that I remember when I was in my residency and I missed going to the run and try runs on Wednesdays. Mm. And it had been a year because I was up in Montgomery on Wednesdays. And when I came back, I went back to the group and didn't really know as many people. And Bo talk to me at Buffalo Wild Rings and let me sit there with him and his brother and chit-chat. And from chit-chatting with them, other people started to come over and introduce themselves. And then all of a sudden, Suzanne and Chris. Mm-hmm. And it <laughs> takes off from there where I met everyone and <laughs> had this little group. And that is what's so great. It's, it's adults being in kindergarten. Kindergartners are so good at walking mm-hmm. into a room full of people they don't know. Mm-hmm. Finding something in common with someone. And runners are like that. Yeah, yeah. People with different political beliefs and religious beliefs and all sorts of different walks of life have something in common Mm -hmm. that I think what draws us to running is it is, I just see it as the essence of life. That it is this one moment where you have to be present in this moment. Mm -hmm. There's nothing else but you and what you're doing. Just like when you were born and when you're going to die. And that's what those moments where you know what you're made of. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Uh, so good, Rachel. And I will say this. If someone doesn't know you, they should get to know you. <laughs> because one, you are so fun and just a genuine human being. And it's been such a cool thing, all the people you've connected me with. And I'm like, okay. You know? <laughs> But it's just been so fun. And again, when they meet you, because like I said, we've been right. friends yes. for I don't even know how long on social media. <laughs> And then we met who might grow ball and Curly. Right. And literally I told Gray, I was like, okay, that's the coolest part. Like, <laughs> it was just so fun to put that together. And then it was like, wow, she's so cool. And I remember telling her that I was like, well, I cannot wait to have her on the podcast. <laughs> like, it's going to be great. And I was right. I, I mean, so good. Your perspective is so genuine and authentic and real. And I appreciate that. Thank you. So. That is one of the highest praises. That's <laughs> literally... <laughs> I wrote a note on here for myself of, I wrote, well, I wish you weren't a cliche, but you are, and that's okay. (laughs) And I also wrote, just be genuine Mm. and don't worry about if that's good for somebody else to listen to. (laughs) Absolutely. Oh, people should listen to you. (laughs) Sometimes. Oh, Rachel, I cannot wait to see your races. Likewise. Are you going this weekend? To which one? Okay, well, tomorrow is one at St. Luke's for, he was a senior. Oh, uh, yeah, no. Host. Yeah. And then Sunday. Sunday is, yes, I'll yes. be there Sunday. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, for yeah. Victor. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Amazing. Mm. Rachel, thank you so much. Of course. Oh, thank, you thank you for what you're doing here mm-hmm. and continuing. I really genuinely see you as a community weaver. And I think that sensation you got of this is so cool to meet all these people. I think you're doing that for people. And mm-hmm. so that's awesome. Well, that's, thanks for making me cry. Oh. Oh, Rachel, you are just 
so incredible and so thankful for you. And I cannot imagine all that you went through, even just going back and listening and just sitting there and listening to your story the first time. I just was like, this person is sitting in front of me of all that she's gone through. And listening to it again, you are incredible, my friend. Superwoman, that's your new name, is Superwoman Rachel. So, so thankful for you and your story and for always making progress. And as you said, progress is perfection. Wow, so good. And just what an incredible mindset you are. What an incredible mom you are and wife and runner. And I can't wait to see you cross all those finish lines, my friend. Wow, <laughs> you are incredible. So. I am a huge fan. I absolutely adore you. Just thank you, Rachel, for your story. It's absolutely incredible. And thank you so much to Fighting With Hope for feeling up our podcast this month. Again, guys, definitely go check them out on their website and their social media. Get with some friends and everyone sponsor a box. Cannot say enough great things about Fighting With Hope and what they do for our community and all around the world. And if you're fighting with cancer, know that you are loved. Know that you're being prayed for. Know that... You are stronger than you think. And also, feel free to reach out to Fighting With Hope and get you a cancer box. That's all I can say. There's nothing more I can do, but I can tell you that. So definitely check out Fighting With Hope. And again, community, let's love on all of our runners, those that are coming back from injuries, those that are about to go through an injury, those that are fighting for their life. Let's just love on our community and keep them encouraged because the story's not over. And this is only one chapter. And there are more finish lines ahead. So you guys got this. You guys have got this. And as Rachel reminds us, everything's temporary. Mm, so good. Thank you again to Mars Hill for providing us such a great and safe location for us to be able to share our stories. The good, the bad, the ugly. Thank you to Mars Hill. And they believe in the running community. They believe in our running stories. And that is truly a beautiful thing. So grateful for that and grateful for the opportunity to be able to share your stories. And that is brought on by our Patreon supporters. Could not do this without them. They make sure that everything's taken care of financially because it does cost (laughs) to have a podcast. And so we put out weekly ones and we never want to miss a story. And so it does cost. And so, so grateful for that and our Patreon supporters. So definitely like, share, and comment Rachel's story. And even put on there like something that you learned from the podcast. That's always really cool to learn. So we love reading them. We love getting the messages about them. But post it. That's always really cool to see what one another gets. And if you want to join our Patreon community, do so. Because that's pretty epic too. And as always, thank you to Gilead Tech Services. He does an outstanding job of making sure that... We all sound really good on the podcast, especially me because I'm a blunderer. So I really appreciate Greg for all that he does. Definitely check him out if you need a website updated or freshened up or if you need to create a new one. He is your go-to. Cannot say enough great things about him. And he's always striving to make Run Your Story podcast better and always striving to make it user-friendly, runner-friendly. And we all know how runners are. (laughs) We don't like technology. So... Thank you, Greg, for always thinking about the running community and what you do for this running community and for our community, building websites, man. Great job. So, guys, until next time, go run your story because every story needs to be heard.